Hi, this is Miss Warnow. This is our new unit, All Matter and Change, Unit 2. We're going to be today looking at dimensional analysis. This is sometimes called factor label or unit analysis. You'll be using this skill not only in chemistry, but also in physics next year. So in chemistry this year, we will use conversion factors to solve problems using dimensional analysis. It's important that you use dimensional analysis. Do not attempt to do these in any other way. You will receive points and credit for using dimensional analysis. So be sure to pay special attention, set up your problems the way I am showing you. Every dimensional analysis problem contains three major parts. You're going to have an unknown this unit, a given amount, and then you're going to make use of these conversion factors. Conversion factors could be given to you in the problem, or they could be things that you need to know off the top of your head or out of your memory. Okay? Conversion factors are ratios that relate to units that are equal. Right? So, you know um, that there are four quarters and one dollar. We would say this is a conversion factor. They are equivalent to each other. The units, although different, they have the same value. And you could write the quarters on top or you could write the quarters on bottom. Either way, these are equivalent and that ratio is equal to one. Um, in a conversion factor, the top part equals the bottom. Okay. It's a way that we convert between units. Okay, And what we will be doing is when we set up these conversion factors is we will be multiplying them. Right? And in order to use a conversion factor, we need to align the units so that the units we are trying to get rid of cancel out. Okay, So looking at these dominoes, you see you have the one on top. Well, if we want to cancel it out, we need to have it on bottom. Okay, So just like in a math class, if you want to get rid of an x, you would need it to be on bottom to get rid of it. All right. Now, if it's the unit you want to get rid of is on top, you'd place it on bottom. If it's on bottom, you will replace it on top. You can derive conversion factors if you know the relationship between the unit and the unit that you want. So you already know um, from the metric uh, equivalence that we did last unit that one meter is equivalent to 10 decimeters. You could write 10 decimeters on top and one meter on bottom. Both of these are conversion factors. They are equivalent to one. You can use metric conversion factors and dimensional analysis to solve problems concerning measurement. Now, these the metric conversion factors will not be given to you in the problem. We expect you to have them memorized because you had to do that last unit, so you may want to brush up on that if you haven't. So here are some other conversion factors. Minutes and seconds. You know that one minute is the same as 60 seconds. That would be a conversion factor. Or we could have written it as 60 seconds equivalent to one minute. We would expect you to know that. Years and days. One year is 365 days. So we'll talk about leap year here. Or we could have written it as 365 days is one year. Okay. These are things that we would expect you to know won't be given to you necessarily in a problem. So take a moment and do year and weeks, days and weeks, and meters and centimeters. Pause the video. I hear it back. One year is 52 weeks. One week is seven days. And then one meter equals 100 centimeters. So let's do dimensional analysis. So the first thing we want to do, okay, you have four dozen and wants to know how many eggs. So you start always by writing down your given. You're given four dozens. Okay. I always draw brackets but I'll show you other ways you can do it. We want to get rid of dozen, so dozen needs to go on bottom, and we're trying to get to x. Now, what's the relationship between dozen and x? That one dozen equals 12 eggs. So you notice how this crosses out here, and we're left with the unit that we're looking for, which is x. So when we multiply 4 times 12 equals 48 divided by 1, you get 48 eggs. Now notice our given has two significant digits and our answer has two significant digits. This conversion factor is considered exact. One dozen equals exactly 12 eggs, so we would not need to look at it in terms of significant digits. All right. How many milliliters are in 4.56 liters of a solution? So we're still at 4.56 and we're looking for how many milliliters. So we start by always writing down our given. 
And instead of doing brackets, I'm going to show you another way. You could do a multiplication sign. We want to get rid of liters, so it needs to go on bottom. Do we know a relationship between liters and milliliters? We should. From the last unit, you put a 1 in front of the large unit, liters. And how many milliliters are in a liter? 1,000. So these cross out. And we're left with milliliters, which is what we're looking for. And so we say 4.56 times 1,000 divided by 1, and you get 4,560 milliliters. This has three significant digits, one, two, three significant digits. How many kilometers are in 587,000 meters? Okay, so we'll start out by writing down our given which is 5,800, I mean, 587,000 meters. And I like to do the brackets, so I'll do the brackets again. We want this unit to cross out, so it needs to go on bottom. Do you know a relationship between meters and kilometers? You do. So you put a one in front of the larger unit, and there are 1,000 meters and a kilometer, and those units cross out. So we multiply everything across the top. 587,000 times 1 is 587,000. Divided by 1,000, and you get 587 kilometers. This number has three significant digits. The answer has three. We're not needing to look at these numbers because these are exact. One kilometer exactly equals 1,000 meters. How many moles are in 56.1 grams of copper? And then they tell you what the conversion factor. So this is a conversion factor. So you can be asked to do dimensional analysis with things you've never heard of. So we haven't even really discussed the mole in here, but you know how it relates to grams. So we still start by writing down our given, which is 56.1 grams of copper. Whatever unit's up top is going to come down on bottom. Now, we need to go from grams to moles, and you wouldn't know that off the top of your head. We would have to give that to you. Oh, look, we did right there in the problem. So we know, do know a relationship between grams of copper and moles of copper. So let's do that. But what is that relationship? That one mole of copper equals 63.55 grams of copper. These units should cross out. We're left with moles of copper, which is what we're wanting. And so when we say 56.1 times 1, we get 56.1. Then we divide it by the 63.55, and what you get in your calculator is this. But this measured value at the beginning had three significant digits right here, so we need three. One, two, three. So the final answer would look like, and we'd add this side, this two, remember from the last video? We look right here, this number is a seven, so that two is going to round up to a three. So you cannot forget your significant digit rules for this next unit. You need to be applying them. And if you've forgotten them, you can go back and, and rewatch those videos or ask us questions in class. Here's another one. How many. Um, decagrams are in 158,000 centigrams. we we'll start by writing down our given. And whatever units up top comes down the bottom. Now, you may not know the relationship between centigram and decagram, so um, I would go from centigram to gram. Okay, and which is bigger, a gram, and how many centigrams are there in a gram? 100, and those cross out. And we left with grams, but we won't decagrams, so we just draw another bracket, and we want to get rid of grams, so grams on top, so it comes down on bottom. We're going to get decagrams, which is bigger, a decagram, and there are 10 grams in a decagram that crosses out. And so when we multiply 156,000 times 1 times 1, we get 158,000. Divided by 100, divided by 10, and you end up with 158 decagrams. You had three sig figs, three sig figs. 
So dimensional analysis, you can have multi steps. You could have work a problem that goes all the way across the page. The key is just make sure you cross out your units. Now, if you knew the relationship between centigrams and uh, decagrams, you could have done it in one step. This concludes video one. Make sure you've taken good notes, come to class with any questions, and definitely review your metric prefixes if you've um, forgotten those. So you want to make sure that you um, are able to use those off the top of your head. And see you in class tomorrow.